cost so much again. Hello, I'm Juanita Crafton from PCC. I'm talking with Mrs. Shirley Bunch from Pamper Incorporated. We're here at People's Bank where they have on display a gift of remembrance, an exhibit of black history. Uh, Mrs. Bunch, what exactly does Pamper stand for? Pamper stands for Paducah Association for Motivation, Progress, Education, and Rehabilitation. Okay, what are some of your goals? What are some of your activities? Our activities are, our main activity is the medical and dental fund in which we work with the city school and the Catholic schools in helping with uh, dental needs for underprivileged children and emergency situations which occur. We finance some of those. And it is uh, financed through the efforts of the Ebony Fashion Fair we have each year at Tillman Auditorium. Okay. Uh, you have you're sponsoring this display here. What is the purpose of the display? The purpose of our display is the second week in February is set aside this year for Black History Week. And this year, we chose to do local history on our blacks here in Paducah. And it's an emphasis on the contributions that blacks have made to the community. Okay, is that, what is Black Heritage Week, is that showing the emphasis on the blacks and their achievements? Yes, that's true. Okay. Uh, you have two more members of your organization here. Is that right? Yes, you want I to do. talk about? I want to give a little history. So if you want to, you can introduce them and we can go on with it. Okay. I have Mrs. Harba here, and she is going to give a display on our local emphasis on the back side of our display on our local blacks here. Okay. And Mrs. Uh, Wilma Cotton here, she went to West Kentucky Industrial College when it was here. And we are doing the display on it primarily because it is their last year at the present site in which it will be moved out near Paducah Community College. Okay, she's gonna give a little bit of the history of that? Yes. Okay, so we'll start with her and then move over to the exhibit. Okay. Okay, so we'll go right here. Uh, I would like to give the first part of a West Kentucky Vocational Technical School, which was originally West Kentucky Industrial College, and that, um, as I knew it. Each family loves to reap the reward of a noted child, and each city loves to claim its own who attains success. As this is true of families and cities, so it was with this community when it was known of the great success West Kentucky Industrial College had attained and the many great things that had come from a hole that was dug in the ground by lamplight, which many times was held by the founder's, founder's wife. Dr. Dennis Henry Anderson was the founder of this junior college, which also had a high school department, and it was also a boarding school. Dr. Anderson, a Tennessean by birth, came to Kentucky after teaching several years in Tennessee. He had a vision for the youth of Kentucky, especially the black youth. He saw the need for teacher training, and hence the West Kentucky Industrial College became a reality. Friends and neighbors contributed from $1 to $200 to get started, and you will see uh, some of this, uh, these uh, names listed on the sheets of paper that we have here that were the original sheets that were where the names were given to Dr. Anderson as he had written them down. Uh, Dr. Anderson gave $200 himself. Eventually, one four-story building rose from that large hole he had dug, and the hole became the dining hall and cafeteria of the first building of the college that I knew. There was a log cabin or a wooden building before, but it was not built over this hole which he dug in the ground. Uh, and of the first building of the college on the first floor, we had a science department, library, classrooms, a chapel, offices, music rooms, and band practice rooms. On the second and third floors were the dormitory rooms for girls. And across the street, the boys were housed in two little gun barrel houses. 
Most students worked part of their way through school, and some had to work all of their way. And Dr. and Mrs. Anderson made personal sacrifices to help any student who came their way. The girls worked in the cafeteria and offices, and the boys worked on the two farms that were required to furnish a great part of the food for the students. There were chickens, hogs, and also cattle raised for food, as well as the large gardens. Most students came from all over Kentucky. However, others came from several other states. What about the teachers? Well, we can't say enough about those dedicated people in the allotted time to give them justice. For you must know that they did not receive the salaries of today and many spent their own money to buy materials to make his or her department what he would like for it to be. As in all colleges, there were fraternities, sororities, and of course, outstanding football and basketball teams. They even had a very good, bas a good girls basketball team in those days. There were good debating teams also. The West Industrial College was a fully accredited school and many teachers in this area, as well as many others, got their first teacher training at West Kentucky Industrial College. It is true that some students who attended West Kentucky Industrial College did not teach. Some went on to become lawyers, doctors, and even ministers. Even though the students worked hard and studied hard, they did occasionally have the opportunity to do other things. And one other important thing to the students at that particular time was to see someone in the Big Band era. And among the greatest was when Louis Armstrong and his Savoy Ballroom Orchestra performed in the gymnasium. And the students could dance until 1 a.m., which was a rarity in those days. Louis' rendition of Tiger Rag was only as a superb artist could give and will never be forgotten by any of us who was there. Then, on June, from June 11th to June 25th in 1937, the last commencement of dear old West Kentucky Industrial College was held. And on Friday morning, January 25th, 1937, Dr. Anderson was presented with a book of memories by Dr. R.B. Atwood. And Dr. R.B. Atwood was the president of Kentucky State College at Frankfurt. And thus, the West Kentucky Industrial College was merged with Kentucky State College at Frankfort. The college is gone, but the memories will always remain. I am indeed happy to have attended such a school. And from one large hole in the ground, eventually five lovely buildings grew. Administration building, gymnasium, boys and girls dormitories, and a training school for the teachers. One professor of psychology in the person of Mr. Marion Lundeman, who has retired and returned to Paducah, and he still lives. Okay, now we'll step over to the exhibit and take a look at that and get a history of what that is. Here we are at the exhibit. We have a few things from the West Kentucky Vocational School. Mrs. Cotton will tell us a little bit more about it. So I'll let you just go around and point out a few things. This is Dr. Anderson, who was the founder and president of the West Kentucky Industrial College from 1909 to 1937, when West Kentucky Vocational Technical Training School came into being. This is the sign on the West Kentucky State Vocational Training School now, or technical school as it is called now. These are some of Dr. Anderson's degrees. This was his Master of Arts degree. This was his Applied Psychology degree. These are the documents I was telling you about that were the first uh, monies that he received to start building the college with. Uh, this was um, some of the, uh, the first uh, buildings. This was a little cottage, and it was, uh, these were, they weren't really little cottages, but they were small schools. This is the little cottage right here. But this is where the 
first building started up as I knew it. Uh, this is the completed first building right here. This is a county board dinner uh, that was prepared by the teachers and the classes in what was called the domestic science department at that particular time. These are some of the students. And this was uh, President Anderson as he was an, a younger man. This was, as I told you, eventually the boys' dormitory after, it had, after they had built a girls' dormitory. This became the boys' dormitory. This was a very famous basketball team. This was the girls' dormitory. This was the girls' basketball team that I, and I'd like for you to notice the attire they have on. This was a dedicatory program of the new administration and, rec and the recitation building. This is a picture of some of the presidents, all but one, perhaps. This is the president now of the West Kentucky State Vocational Technical School, Mr. M.W. Taylor. This was Mr. C.W. Timberlake, who still lives and is in his 90s. He lives at Madisonville, Kentucky. This is Mr. H.C. Mathis, who still lives and lives on Mathis, H.C. Mathis Drive. This was Dr. Anderson. This was an American Baptist paper, newspaper. This is Dr. Anderson, and this was the Reverend R.J. Miller, who was at one time pastor of Washington Street Baptist Church. Oh, damn, over here. You have some down here. Mm -hmm. Let's see these. Yes. And uh, this is, uh, this was a uh, lifting the colored citizens of the state and uh, nation to a plane of greater usefulness. And this was when it, when the, uh, Build, this building was completed and he was telling about that. And this was a light, it's the Lighthouse paper. And it, the headlines are defending the college when it was sort of shaky about whether it would be moved then or not. The Lighthouse paper, uh, the daughter of the Lighthouse, the man who owns the, light, owns the Lighthouse paper still lives right in the spot, which is 14th and Adkins Avenue. Mrs. Hattie Stewart, who is a teacher here. Uh, former teacher, rather. She's retired now. And this lighthouse paper uh, is one of the black papers that was done. This is West Kentucky Vocational School making a strong bid for expansion right here. These were um, buildings that were metal buildings that were hauled by my husband and uh, Mr. B.W. Brown from Covington, Kentucky and were set up here by my husband, who was the um, a carpentry and instructor then. And these were hauled down on truck by uh, them and set up there. And this is the, um, administra uh, this is the administration building. This is the barbering department. And this I think is the nursing department here, as best I can see there. Uh, but they used to have a nursing department there, mm -hmm. and that's a part of the nursing department. And uh, this is uh, trade educational opportunities for Negroes advance in Kentucky. And this shows the cosmetology department, woodworking department, I think this is a drafting department. This is uh, another West Kentucky vocational school built by Dr. Dennis H. Anderson. And of course, West Kentucky vocational school is on the, the site of the old West Kentucky Industrial College and Mr. A.C. Mathis was the president there. This was the school paper, which was the lion. And these are bids on uh, WKV, uh, West Kentucky Vocational Training School classroom building to be opened. On, that was the technical building, which is now right on the corner of uh, 14th and Adkins. These were some of the old buildings that were there before. And this one particular building takes in all of those trades that were taught in, each trade was taught in one of these buildings, but it all became under one cover 
when this building was finished. This is the teacher, Mr. Cur oh, dear. Um, Mr. Curtis Newburn, who is an instructor in uh, auto mechanics. This is the more of the lion paper, which was the was uh, was the paper for the school. That's the boys basketball team. And that's the Jefferson Hotel, which was just advertisements at that time. And this is a student working in the auto mechanics, or uh, I guess that's an electrical. It is, and that's an electrical department. This is a student. I guess that's just. Uh, is that drafting? drafting? I thought that was a picnic table and she was just studying a lesson <laughs> there. Um, this is in the cosmetology department. This is the, one of the instructors. This is Mrs. Louise Donaldson. And uh, this is some more of the lion paper. This is a senior class of what, I don't know what year this is. Was that a weekly paper? Or? Yes, uh -huh, a weekly school paper. Mm -hmm. These are just pictures of today, and uh, and you can see they are just in the different um, departments of the school. Okay, are these the old annuals? Sorry, nineteen sixty-seven. Yes. Yeah, see them. This, uh, yeah, the, these this are annuals of the. That's the line, nineteen sixty-six, mm -hmm. and this 66. is the, yeah. That's what it was called. The annuals. Okay. So I didn't see. Okay, and these are just students that are going today. This or? is the this is Mrs. Green, who is a teacher of rem, uh, remedial reading, I believe. Okay, uh, we'll turn it over to Mrs. Harwood. We're talking now with Mrs. Harwood. These exhibits are some of the former black businesses and churches and all that were in Paducah, and I'll just let you go around and tell us about it. Okay. What we have here on this particular display is food services, transportation, and bands. Paducah was well known for its food services, particularly its barbecue stands. A lot of people will recall Mr. Bud Moss's stand. They called him Uncle Bud. And of course, we have a display here of Mr. Buster Hensley, who operated a barbecue stand also across from the courthouse there at 7th and Clark Street. We have a display on Dather's Eat House. She had a restaurant where she was open 24 hours a day during the boom when the atomic energy plants were being built. She also ran a hotel. Um, we have Oscar's barbecue stand. That was Mr. Oscar Harris. He operated a restaurant also. Paducah was noted for its bands back in the 1920s and 30s. And that story uh, is one of the local Paducans that I can recall, but there were several others like Fate Marble, and he also played in the Louis Armstrong Orchestra. There were other famous persons that played in these bands in Paducah that went on to play with famous persons. Um, we had several black taxes. In fact, I was told that at one time, uh, blacks were the only ones that operated the taxi stands. And here on display, we have the Massey Taxi Service and information about the Whiteside Taxi Line. We also have on display here the Metropolitan Hotel. It's the only black hotel that's presently in existence, being operated now by Mrs. Gaines. Her son is uh, known as Big House Gaines, a famous coach. Um, the Metropolitan Hotel, as I say, started in 1911, went through the flood, et cetera, and it's a landmark. It's made a, it's had a booming business also. At the bottom here, we have Mrs. Ruby Benberry, who was the first black licensed beautician to open uh, a beauty shop in Paducah. If you like, we can move on over. Hey, these are the former churches here? No, they're presently in existence. They're century churches, churches that are 100 years old or older. Uh, the first black church that came into existence uh, was Washington, Washington Street Missionary Baptist Church. 
and it was uh, a former slave served as pastor of this church for 39 years. He's known as Pastor Dupe. Uh, another century old church is Greater Harrison Street Baptist Church, um, Birch Chapel AME Church, Clay Street Missionary Baptist Church, and Burke's, um, I'm sorry, I guess those are the only ones that we have on display here today that are century old. Okay. This particular section deals with the schools. Uh, supposedly, the first known school was operational as early as 1875, but we have no record of it. In, uh, Contact, been in contact with the various peoples about the school, there's very little information left on black schools, and it really hurts my heart because I was a graduate of Lincoln High School, and the information that was there and things that meant a lot to us no longer exist. But Lincoln School started in 1894, and it existed for 72 years or more served uh, people from grades 1 through 12 for many years. And during the, after integration came into being in 1966, Lincoln ceased to exist and uh, black students were consolidated into the various white schools in their particular areas. We also had several one-room schools and this particular building is a typical one-room school where you'd have one teacher teaching eight classes at one time. There's the Pleasant Grove School. There's still a building that's in existence behind the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. And it started as early as um, in the early 1800s. There was a Paul Lawrence Dunbar School, which was located, uh, some of the schools located in town were the Roland Town School, the Southside Elementary School, Northside School, and of course, Rosary Chapel School. It was a Negro school that started in 1947 and it existed until 1967 for 20 years. Started out in two gun barrel houses and they do have a new structure that's still in existence there now. The, excuse me, these are some of the yearbooks. This one goes back to 1951 and as you can see some of the uh, faculty from Lincoln School. I pictured here Mrs. Betty Coulter Cox um, was the first black teacher to teach English at Paducah Tillman High School and she is still living today. Uh, Mr. John R. Friesen was the principal at Northside Elementary School and later went to the Paducah Board of Education with integration and he is still living and very active. Mrs. Gladys Sullivan uh, is still teaching on a part-time basis and uh, still very active in the community. And there are pictures here of the graduating class, etc. Lincoln was known for its uh, good basketball, football teams, and they had uh, a band, high step and drill corps, and everything that they did, they took pride in. Mm -hmm. This particular display shows the insurance companies, funeral homes, medical profession, and miscellaneous. Paducah had uh, several insurance companies that were in existence. Right now, we presently have two, and that's Mammoth Life and the Supreme Life Insurance Company. And it does give the history of that. Here we have listed only two black funeral homes, although there are more, but these are some of the older funeral homes. One is the Monday Funeral Home, and then the other one is the Hammock Funeral Home. In the medical profession, there were several black doctors in the medical profession here. And at the present time, we only have one practicing doctor, and that's Dr. Andrew W. Morton, who is a dentist. And he was the first black to ever seek a uh, seat on the Paducah Board of Education, which was in 1951. But we do have information here about the doctors. Dr. Hart, Dr. Polk, Dr. Davis is um, retired and still living in the city of Paducah. 
And this miscellaneous information here is, uh, we have information on the newspapers. There were two black newspapers, the Lighthouse, which Mrs. Cotton mm -hmm. pointed out to you on the front, and then the Struggler, which later came into being by Dr. Anderson, who was the editor. This Bicentennial Celebration, do you want to this is um, a memorial, a book of uh, memories actually on blacks. In fact, a lot of the information that we got here today came from the information that was included in this book. And this was part of a celebration that we have here every year during the 8th of August. 8th of August uh, is when blacks learned of their emancipation proclamation. So this is sort of a celebration that we had back during that time. And a lot of people did not have a chance to see this book. It does have in here um, the first Negro quartet, a picture of that, and other in interesting information. There was a black-owned shoe shop where shoes were repaired. And that's what this picture is. Okay. Anything else? No, this completes our exhibit. Okay, I'd like to thank you for explaining it. Uh, now, Mrs. Bunch would like to give a few more, a little more information about Pamper Incorporated and a few more things, so we'll talk to her next. In conclusion with our exhibit, uh, Stan Barnes is the president of Pamper. And Pamper has been in existence for 12 years now, and it is a civic nonprofit organization. This is our fourth year for our Black History display here at People's Bank. And we would like to thank them for permitting us to put our exhibit up here. Uh, our theme, the gift of remembrance here, as you see, we got most of our information from various people here in the community, photos and all, and things that they have gone back in the background and helped us with is why we chose our theme this year, the gift of remembrance. Okay, well, this is certainly an interesting exhi exhibit. We'd like to encourage everyone to come down and see it if you can. A lot of work has gone into it, and we'd like to thank Pamper Incorporated for bringing this exhibit to us, and we thank you for tuning in. We'd also like to thank our guest, Mrs. Bunch, Mrs. Harbour, Mrs. Cotton, and thank you for tuning in. Good day.
Did you know it was our birthday? Mickey Mouse Club first started in 1929. And that means Mickey Mouse Club 50 years old this year. Hello, Mickey. We love you and we are glad the happiness you have brought us. And we think we know the secret to your happiness. We know Walt Disney created you, Snow White, Pinocchio, the Three Pigs, Cinderella, Mary Poppins, and lots of our other favorite characters. We think he has been giving you advice. Mick, we have been listening carefully to the Disney songs, and we think the songs are telling us how to make <coughs> each of our lives happy. We'd like to share these ideas with you, Mickey, and our special guest in the audience. So have a seat and on with the show. Scott says that you must begin by blending yourself. When you rush around and help a circle searching everywhere for something true, you're at the age and not believing when all the make believe is true. You must face the age and not believing, doubting every, everything you ever knew, until at last you start putting there something wonderful in you. Jenny says to believe in yourself and then share your dreams with the stars. Bye. 
a brick. Now this is now this little pig worked hard. He made a floor of wood. He made a door. He built his house brick by brick. And he made a chimney on the roof. When it was done, it was a, it was a good house. That's right. And it was a strong house. That's right. Take 
not let your word get here. And mine said, and help to be good. All through our lives, we have to make decisions between right and wrong. Will you be as strong as rock and always do what's bad? Amen. Mm -hmm. 